At that time, an airbase was built in Lanzhou, where Soviet experts trained pilots for our country. This area was also a major transportation route for Soviet war supplies to the mainland, and often transportation convoys from Xinjiang would pass through Lanzhou. One day, the Northwest War Resistance Troop held a reunion to console a convoy coming from Xinjiang. The convoy was carrying anti-war materials from the Soviet Union's aid to China. The drivers in the convoy were also Uyghurs. At the party, a Uyghur driver wearing a small, flowery hat ceremoniously went on stage and sang a song, a very short one, a few lines at random. No one could understand the lyrics. Everyone applauded politely, but the response was not enthusiastic at all. My father, however, found in the young driver's song a rhythm from the West, and he immediately took out paper and pen to write down the melody in shorthand. In order to figure out the general meaning of the lyrics, he went to the driver, bought him a drink, and asked him to sing the song again. My father did not know Uyghur, but the driver spoke some simple Chinese, and the two of them struggled to communicate with each other. My father found Kadir, a Uyghur businessman he had met in Lanzhou, and asked him to help translate the song, noting down the words, Dasaka City, Pretty Girl, Long Braid, and I want to make money to marry her. I want to earn money to marry her, fan her, and some other words and phrases. Father has a natural ability to sense, although he did not fully understand the original meaning of the song, but he from the driver's lively and playful demeanor and obviously feel a kind of ease, humor, and freedom. Finally, he worked out that the lyrics were to the following effect. There is a city in Xinjiang called Dasaka with hard stone walls where lives Kambar, whose sweaty braid grows so long that it reaches to the ground. I'll take her as my wife and fan her every day, and take my sister in dowry with me and drive a carriage to marry her. Such lyrics and tunes are definitely not in line with the aesthetics of a Han Chinese youth who has received formal music education, and the original music is sung in the second half of the beat, which is also not suitable for the singing habits of Han Chinese compatriots. So he rewrote four Chinese lyrics and then selected part of the original melody for the four lyrics to reset the song. The original music, 4-2 beat fast plate, modified to 4-4 beat slow plate after repeated revisions and test singing, finally completed a lively and playful, catchy Xinjiang folk song, Carriage Driver's Fantasy. This was the first Uyghur folk song that my father adapted in Lanzhou. He titled the song, The Carriage Driver's Fantasy, because it wryly describes the poor carriage driver's longing and yearning for life and love. The next day, the troupe then put together a program called The Coachman's Fantasy. At the farewell party for the Xinjiang transportation caravan to Xi'an, my father sang The Carriage Driver's Fantasy on stage, and he also performed the Uyghur dance he had just learned his singing immediately attracted and infected the entire audience. Soon, the streets of Lanjo were also filled with the humming of the youngsters. If you want to marry someone, don't marry someone else. You must marry me, bring millions of dollars, lead your sister, and come in a carriage. Later, the carriage driver's fantasy was renamed The Girl of Dar Ben Chung, this Xinjiang folk song was a turning point in my father's music creation career. In the fall, the troupe went on another tour to the Heishi Corridor, and they went all the way to Jiayuguan Pass. The life of the peasants under the Kilian Mountains was very hard, and in some places there was a serious lack of water, so the local people stored the winter snow and ice in the cellar wells for a year's food. The people of the troop never drank this kind of cellar water, which is extremely hard to drink and unhygienic. The local people have been drinking water for generations, but the foreigners in the city can't get used to it, and they all feel bloated and painful, and some of them want to return to Lanzo. My father said, don't the folks drink this water for generations? 
Why can't we drink it? Drinking it again the next day, the water seemed sweeter. Father seized every opportunity to collect folk songs in every place he visited. When in Juquan, he collected and adapted a batch of Xinjiang folk songs such as Youth Dance and Lift Up Your Cover from Uyghur vendors selling raisins. Zhao Qihai, my father's classmate at Beijing Normal University, left Lanzhou for Chongqing, and he asked my father to send him a new song when he wrote it in the future. He said that when he arrived in Chongqing, the song The Girl in Darban Cheng would surely make him a big hit in Chongqing. It was Zhao Qihai who brought the song to Chongqing, the accompanying capital, and made the song popular in the foggy city for a while. In the program performed by the Northwest War Resistance Troop, there was a dance song of the southern border, Yilala, Shayig, which was collected by my father in the Hexi Corridor, and he rewrote the lyrics of this dance song as an anti-Japanese propaganda. Shayig is a narrow silk hand woven by the folk in the southern border. Whenever the actors sing Shayig, everyone feels a little awkward because it is a harmonic sound with Kill A. At the time of the Japanese invasion of China, such a harmonic is very unpleasant, easy to remind people of the Japs. My father then, when the troop returned to Xining after the performance in the Hexi Corridor, my father started to revise Yilala Xiaige. At that time, the troop lived in Xining City North Street, an exclusive courtyard. The courtyard has a two-story building. The center of the courtyard, there is a large acacia tree with dense foliage. People like to sit around under the tree to rest. One evening, my father was sitting under a big tree, pondering over the lyrics, and the half moon slowly rising in the sky brought him inspiration. The rising moon in the sky, the small upstairs screen window, and the big acacia tree behind him immediately gave him a creative mood. He found paper and pen, and with the dim light, he quickly completed two paragraphs of lyrics with a Spanish-style romantic flavor. When my father composed the music for the two sections of the lyrics, he also adopted the Virginia mode of the European music system and used the three ascending symbols hash one, hash two, and hash four in the melody. In the melody, he used the three ascending signs hash one, hash two, and hash four to let the actors sing along with the chromatic scale changes of the tune and express the feeling of the half moon's whirling movement in the musical language, making Half Moon Climbing Up a love song with rich lyricism and singability. The song Half Moon Climbing Up brought my father's creation of an adaptation of a minority folk song from Xinjiang to a new level. He incorporated different contents into this song, and he highly artisticized this folk song tune making it detach from a completely rustic atmosphere and organically combining the rustic with the literati and the artistic, so that the song not only retained the simplicity of the rustic folk song, but also expressed the spiritual temperament and aesthetic psychology of a nation. But at the same time, it was highly artistic, which made it possible for it to be disseminated and have a chance to move towards the, the opportunity to go to the stage art.